Welcome to my channel. Please enjoy the video. What is going on, my tea sippers? Now, y'all, I'm sorry I didn't cover Cheryl Mack, but there are a lot more people I'm going to be covering because it seems that Sweet Tea TV is a Aaliyah, Barry Hankerson, Diane R. Kelly channel. Okay, and all of the enablers and players involved. So I'm going to give y'all what y'all want because I know this is what you guys look forward to on my channel, this R. Kelly News. Okay, so we know that Mrs. Cheryl Mack landed on the track's mother, in which I didn't know that Cheryl Mack was his mother. Now we know she testified in court that she saw a woman being massaged, beginning to massage R. Kelly, and that same woman later accused his a little tale of a bills. That was kind of my cue to leave, Mac said. I was very uncomfortable. She also testified that she later saw the woman's face near R. Kelly's little man area, guys. She also said that Kelly lost his temper back in 2015 after she supposedly ruined a surprise birthday party from the former stylish Cass Howard. And her sign, he made her sign a letter of an apology that included false claims that she accepted kickbacks from booking agents. Ms. Mack said, I apologize out of fear. Several witnesses have testified that Kelly made them write those apology letters purportedly to absolve him of misconduct, which prosecutors could use to illustrate the tight control that the witness were under. And Kelly demanded of all of those around him. Now, see, guys, like I said it before, R. Kelly is not as ignorant as everyone thinks him out to be. Just because he cannot read and write, he's very intelligent at manipulation. We all should know this by now. Now, I want you guys to listen to something that I dug up. Okay? And this is very juicy. This was all went on for a while in 2009. I began working with a female artist named Precious. Precious was 17 years old and she was originally from Chicago. She was living in Atlanta at the time. Precious was very excited about me as her manager. And when I told her mother that I had a great relationship with Robert, they had both wanted me to meet him and showcase Precious's music. That was an easy task. I called Robert and told him about Precious and invited her and her mom out to Olympia Fields. I covered the cost and air hotel for all of us. When we arrived in Chicago, we were invited to the home where there was a get together. There was a basketball game on the court at his home and the bar was open on the lawn. Precious and her mom, who are both from Chicago and very big fans of Robert Kelly, they never came close to meeting him. It was beyond their wildest dreams. Robert was very cordial and respectful that night. We were special. We were his special guests. He seemed smitten with Precious. She was young, and this hadn't happened at this point in my Precious and my presence during the stint with Robert. We were invited into his studio, and there we sat listening to music and shuffled through pictures from Precious' portfolio. Precious asked. And with Robert's approval, went to the bathroom down the hall while her mother and I waited in the studio. So during the absence, Robert faked a phone call. He went to the bathroom and escorted Precious to his theater room next to the bathroom. Once he had Precious in the theater room, he locked the door and began his sex act with her. She was a virgin at the time and she was scared out of her mind. If she didn't allow him to have sex with her, then he would refuse her project and this would disappoint me in the end. In the room, they exchanged phone numbers, and when she returned to the room, she seemed nervous and disengaged. He appeared a few minutes later, and we resumed as if the sex trauma never happened. Her mother and I were totally in the dark of this happening. Precious and Robert became very close. They would talk hours on the phone, and her mother and I were clueless. He told her not to tell me that they were talking offline. She was so afraid of Robert. This went on for months. Robert ultimately agreed making this a chocolate factory project and he allowed me to oversee the project. Precious took a firm liking to Robert. Robert would ultimately put Precious up in a hotel in a little less than a mile from his home at the Cook County Inn Suites in Madison. And Madison is like a, a, a small little suburb on in the south suburbs of Chicago, Illinois, guys, for you guys who don't know that. 
He would extend to the room daily to keep her there. Robert requested a writer for Precious to get in her music going. He allowed me as her manager to oversee the project. I hired eight engineers and songwriters for the project that were tones. When he would tell, when he would yell at Precious about what she should wear to the studio, she would cry out of fear. She said that she would that she, that he would beat her at the end of each. This is disgusting. Okay, guys, so she said that Robert would beat her at the end of each session. He would buy her costumes and make her dress up and videotaped her. She was forced to wear high heels and tutus with hair bows and lollipops to complete the costume. I scouted a writer for Atlanta in January of 2010. Her name is Veronica Andrews. So Veronica was an aspiring writer. She was in love with Robert. The first day that she met him, he wanted to meet her without me. He said that he wanted to do so because he needed to make sure she was in it for Precious. This was also a part of the scheme. He met her along. After the first night, he called me and said, you the shit. She was 19 at the time. Robert began playing Precious and Veronica against each other until it got to be too much for Precious. Robert had me overseeing the project and proposed a co-management arrangement for both girls. He had me doing all of the work and he would come in at the end of each session to check the progress of Veronica's writing and Precious's vocals. I hired another engineer by the name of Dwayne. He also produced and was present for every session with the girls. Precious was very afraid of Robert. She would almost tear up when she knew that he was on his way to that session. I began to fear what she feared. This went on for quite some time, and Robert ultimately stopped her sessions. By now, she was in a Hampton Inn hotel in Madison, Illinois. I was flying in and out of Chicago. Mm -hmm. The sporadic sessions didn't suit me from a cost perspective. There was no money coming in. He wouldn't allow her to work out, leave her room, or even speak to her mother. It got really out of control. So this person who wrote this, guys, is an anonymous person and they claim to have worked very closely on the Chocolate Factory project with Robert Sylvester Kelly and Precious and this other girl named Veronica. Okay? Now, in my opinion, guys, Cheryl Mack was not coming in to testify against Robert Sylvester Kelly because she wanted to. They put a lot of people on the stand. They were his, his enablers, guys, and this is what people are failing to understand. And this was an or else situation with the feds. Now, I also got more information that Cheryl Mack needs to be really put on full blast because someone recalled her name being tied up in a sex cult. Stuff she mostly flew in under the radar when the shit really hit the fan. So they're saying that Cheryl Mack was really involved with getting the girls in with those flights and recruiting those girls in for Robert. And she knew exactly what was going on. And remember, she witnessed as well at this birthday party doing a sexual act on Robert. So she knew what this man was about and she was in full circle with it, in my opinion. And see, guys, this story is actually very intriguing to me because Precious did actually have a single. Can't remember the title because it was about her being 17. And guess what, guys? She's Soldier uh, Soldier Boy's cousin, okay? She is Soldier Boy's cousin. But yes, R. Kelly had this girl named Precious. Now, both R. Kelly and one of his alleged victims back then when it happened made statements denying allegation that Kelly was holding several women against their will in an abusive cult. The allegations came from a disturbing report published, and it was published on BuzzFeed. Jim Digarotis in the report spoke with families of the alleged victims and former members of Kelly's inner circle. Three former members of Kelly's inner circle included, like I said, Cheryl Mack, Kitty Jones, Asante McGee. They provided details supporting the parents' worst fears. Like I said, Cheryl Mack knew exactly what was going on because she was in the circle. There's no way that you're in the circle and you didn't know what was going on, Drea Kelly, okay? Now, I gave you a pass, sis. Because Drea Kelly still vehemently, adamantly denies ever knowing anything. She was there. She was sleeping on the back of that bus when R. Kelly had the other girls in the bed. And then soon after he decided he wanted to marry Drea, those girls were kicked off the bed on the back of the bus. And it was just him and Drea sleeping on the back of the bus, honey. Okay? 
So, they said that six women lived in the properties rented by Kelly in Chicago and in Atlanta suburbs, and he controls every aspect of their lives, dedicating what they ate, he dictated what they could eat, how they dressed, and when they bathed, when they slept, and how they engaged in sexual encounters. This is on the record. Like I said, all these grown-ass women were around and they knew what was going on, honey. They had some involvement. Like I said, Cheryl Mack, Diana Copeland, these people were not testifying because they wanted to, okay? Like they wanted justice for these young girls. The former members of Kelly's inner circle providing chilling details about their experiences with a life among Kelly's babies as they like to call them the women who live with them. They called them babies. Could you guys believe this? Including how he controlled all the aspects of their life, who they wrote, what they wore, who they can contact, who they can talk to. They couldn't even talk to one another. They even had to ask permission to go to the bathroom. Remember, Drea had to ask permission to go downstairs to get something to eat. And Sparkle witnessed that. So Mac Jones and McGee claim that the women who live with Kelly, who he calls them his babies, they are required to call him daddy and must ask his permission to leave the Chicago recording studio on their assignment on their assigned rooms, dungeon rooms, okay? To leave and all of that and leave the guest house. Kelly rents near his own rented mansion in the suburban Atlanta. A black SUV with a burly driver behind the wheels is almost always parked outside both locations. Kelly confiscated the women's cell phones. Oh my God, guys. Now look, when they go into these sex trafficking rings, they do take the girls' phones. Okay? So I think now, because I was trying to overlook before I came out with any information, when I read the Man Act and I was thinking it was like a slave charged for black people or they made that for black people... But the fact that he took their cell phones away, that is a part of the man act that could be a part of the man act, honey, in sex trafficking. But they're saying that he took the girls' cell phones when they came so they could not contact their friends and family. He gave them new phones that they were only allowed to use to contact him or others in the home or around in the circle with his permission only. This makes a lot of sense. Why would he take their regular cell phone cell phones away they have their numbers of their mother you know you know how guys are how we are with these cell phones you don't remember people's phone numbers because they're stored in your cell phone okay and you have them under your contact so you can call them so no one's really paying attention to what the number is and you can't remember all the numbers all you remember are the names that you have in your phone and you just click on their name and dial their number but anyway, he gave them new phones, guys. They were only allowed to contact him once again and others in the circle with his permission. Sounds like sex trafficking to me. Kelly filmed his sexual activities as we spoke about in other videos. McGee and Jones says and shows the videos to men in his circle. Could you guys believe this? He was showing the shit to the men in the circle. And guys, I wouldn't put it past if R. Kelly was dealing on the dark web. Because it sounds like some really dark shit he was doing with his cult. Now, Mac, the star's former personal assistant, I never knew this, said that Kelly almost always tells the women to dress in jogging suits because he doesn't want their figures to be exposed. He doesn't want them to look appealing. She said when the other men were in the room, Kelly would make the girls turn around and face the wall in their jogging suits because he didn't want them to be looked at by anyone else. This is sexual trafficking. This is sexual exploitation. And Cheryl Mack, this is what we're getting into, guys. She knew exactly what was going on because she's telling this. What did you do, Cheryl Mack? What did you do? Your mother. You allowed this. You were in the circle. Birds of a feather flock together. What was your role, Mrs. Cheryl Mack? You were just assisting him, assisting him with these girls. Or Kelly made a statement when he was free in response. And y'all know he's a goddamn lie saying Mr. Robert Kelly is both alarmed and disturbed at the recent revelations attributed to him. Mr. Kelly unequivocally denies such allegations and will work diligently and forcibly to pursue his accusers and clear his name. Sounds familiar, guys? Sounds like Chris Stokes to me. <laughs> They're lying on me. I didn't do any of this. But he was found guilty, guys. 
let's not forget that now this is old news but I'm giving it to you guys because I just realized it it was sent to me and I wanted to share these things with you guys okay because every video I'm gonna make starting from today it's gonna be R. Kelly R. Kelly R. Kelly because this is what you guys want to see on the channel these are all the emails that I receive Okay, so back then, Jocelyn Savage, one of the women whose parents, Diga Rodas reported speaking with, released a video via TMZ denying that she's been held against her will. Remember that? When Jocelyn got on there and said that she's 21, she's grown, she's okay, and she was being coached, and you could see in the background from her shirt that someone was telling her what to say. Jocelyn was like, I'm 21, I'm about to be 22 in a few more days. I just mainly want to say that I'm a ha in a happy place with my life and I'm not being brainwashed or anything like that. It just came to a point where it's definitely got out, gotten out of hand and I'm totally fine. I'm happy where I am and everything is okay with me. So she wouldn't even answer questions about where she was living and if she had roommates. However, these allegations are the latest in that story when this first broke out. And I had no idea, baby, because um, as I'm putting this stuff together, Cheryl Mack was probably the one in the background allegedly telling her to say that she was okay. Cheryl Mack was in on this just like Diana Copeland, honey. So I take it that Diana Copeland was running the Chicago house and Cheryl Mack was running the Atlanta house. I'm just saying, guys, putting two and two together. And meanwhile, why Diana Copeland says that she never saw those underage girls held by R. Kelly, Cheryl Mack, you need to stop lying, honey. Because it was stated Diana Copeland is the alleged madam who overseen his underage girls and trained them how to have sex with one another. Okay, Diana Copeland? And this is all alleged, but it's in writing. So, in my opinion, guys, from Cheryl Mack to Diana Copeland and everybody else that was involved in our Kelly circle knew firsthand what was going on. And once again, guys, even Demetrius Smith, they all came in to testify or else. OK, and like I said, they can still jump back and lock those people up as well. I'm still waiting on confirmation of this R. Kelly trial that's about to go down in Chicago, Illinois. We will update. And if you guys hear anything, please email me. And thanks again for watching, guys. Until the next video. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching my video. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell.